Welcome to yet another Getting There series at A.T. Steele University. My name is Clinton Normore. I'm the Associate Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion. Here with me today is Dr. John Thurman, who is a graduate of Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine uh, at A.T. Steele University. The Getting There series is designed to create opportunity and access for people who aspire to be in places where those whom we interview uh, are now sitting. Um, we are fortunate enough to have a lot of uh, alumni who are willing to uh, discuss their pathway uh, and the challenges they face uh, so that you uh, won't have to face those same challenges in ascending to a place like A.T. Steele University. So, Dr. Thurman, I want to thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy day uh, on a Sunday, no doubt, <laughs> to uh, be at this webinar for us and to talk about uh, your experiences in, in uh, becoming a doctor. It's an honor. Okay. It's an honor. So before we begin, uh, kind of tell us uh, uh, when you graduated and what you, where you are now and what your current practice is. Okay. I graduated from Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine in 2012, then went off and did residency at the McNeil Resi Family Medicine Residency, which was in, located in Chicago. And then I found my way to Burlington, Iowa, which is, this is my first job out of uh, training that I'm at here in Southeast Iowa. So I'm at the Great River Medical Center. More specifically, we are Family Medicine Mercy Great River Medical Center. And I have a really robust practice here in Burlington, Iowa, in which I see patients from birth till the end of life. Recently took over a directorship with for hospice here and thriving. That's fantastic. So you... um have really a, a phenomenal career uh, in, um, in ascending here. You started off at uh, Army at West Point, <laughs> yeah. uh, and uh, of course that in, in and of itself has challenges. You were an athlete, uh, right. so you played football there as well. Um, how did you find time? Or what did you? How did you prioritize the challenges of athletics uh, and and staying paying attention to your grades in order to position you so that you could uh, uh, go into medical? medical school? It was a challenge from the start, <laughs> right? So, you know, trying to figure out, first of all, I've left home for the first time. Mm. So you're leaving home, you're leaving this environment that you've had. Now you've moved on to this new environment. There's different challenges coming from you every day. You've got really high expectations for maintaining your, your, your classwork and, and doing well and performing. And so I think I had some setbacks, and I think those setbacks actually did help me to get to where I was today, where I am today. I believe that experiencing failure or being brought to a level where you need to truly discover what is your style of learning? How do I actually interpret the information? How can I actually succeed and do this and still be a division one athlete? And so you learn a lot of self uh, discipline techniques, mm -hmm. right? So you've got to set aside for study. You've got to set aside to make sure that you're eating right. You've got to, you got to make sure that you're putting yourself in a position to pass those classes and not just pass and beat the bare minimum, but actually succeed. And I think it wasn't something that just came right away. Obviously, if you can make it to the military academy, you've got good grades, you've got the academic acumen, but it, there's still a learning process. And I think at 18, 19, you're, you're discovering yourself. And by the time I graduated, I'd kind of figured out a pattern on how I learn, how I need to study, mm -hmm. how I need to practice, how I need to lift weights and study the playbook and, and all of these different things and with military duties. But it, it's a process. Right, right. So um, one of the things that's often asked of us um, from uh, our viewers uh, is, you know, Getting there is one thing, um, but being there is something entirely different. So right. uh, going through medical school, they understand, you know, it's going to be different than uh, undergraduate education. Right. Correct. Um, talk to us a bit about um, your experience in medical school with regard to the the volume of information that you had to uh, cite to master uh, and you know, trying to maintain some balance uh, right. outside of that, um, the study habits. Uh, again, I, I think it all goes back to process. I went active duty for seven years before I started med school. So I graduated undergrad, then served active duty, 
made some tours around the world, Kuwait and Iraq, 2002 and 2003, then decided to get into medicine. So being out of academia even posed more of a challenge because if you're going straight from undergraduate to graduate, you're still in that academic mindset. You're still in that mindset of preparing yourself and studying and taking tests and, and being active mentally in that standpoint. You go out and you work in a career, work in a profession, as I did, the fire hose effect that they described med school <laughs> is real. <laughs> and the adjustment process was, I think, I think what held me back probably initially was not believing in myself and believing my process. I was searching, I was going to different study groups or trying to get this person to help tutor or instead of just sitting down with the material and figuring it out. Mm. I was always searching instead of focusing on just getting the learning done. And I think that was a huge lesson that it took me probably four or five months to start to figure out that I just needed to spend time with the work in my own way instead of trying to learn from this classmate or learn from that classmate or that study group. That was not my style. I just needed to work and slug it out. And my grades, you can, you can if you look at my GPA. And if you look at my class grades, it's just, it, it just, it was a continual progression of improvement mm -hmm. because of discovering I can do this. Yeah. So, well, um, that's fantastic. And thank you uh, for those of you who joined. And often uh, we uh, receive questions as we have now. And I want to get to that question here um, for you, uh, uh, Dr. Thurman, from our audience. And it is, um, how would you prepare? How, how best, uh, do you feel one should prepare for the MCAT? What's the best way to prepare for the MCAT? I think you need to find you need to find a book that has been rated highly and just focus on that one book because there's so many different materials out there. You've got all different brands, different manufacturers that have various things. And so you can get overwhelmed with just trying to shuffle in between different books, mm -hmm. find one book. For instance, so a little bit different than the MCAT, but for uh, there's the uh, uh, first aid book. Mm -hmm. Just find something and stick with that book instead of searching because you'll you'll run yourself ragged trying to find different options for what's going to help me the best with the MCAT. So just find something, stick with it and work through questions. Right. Questions, 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 because the questions are that's going to be how you think through the test. Right. Mm -hmm. So. If you can do as many questions, that's the best advice that I can give you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's awesome. Uh, and we need to continue um, uh, doing that very thing. I think that uh, it is important for us to, um, as a, uh, an individual or as a, a, uh, a learner, uh, to find oneself, to know, know oneself so right. that... Uh, you know, you're not always searching and trying to get it done. But right. I want to get to uh, another question with regard to uh, this, the prospect of uh, whole person health, you know, mm. the ideology around osteopath osteopathic medicine. Right. Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine is the founding school of osteopathy. A.T. Steel University is the university under which uh, KCOM exists. Uh, the university has six programs, two medical, two dental uh, and allied health programs and, and an online presence, uh, more than 26 programs uh, within those uh, colleges. Um, the beauty of osteopathy is that whole person health, mind, body, and spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and when we talked off, camp off camera, you uh, spoke about uh, your journey with regard to being able to see a patient from beginning of mm -hmm. life to end of life. Yes. And, and you talk intimately about um, how uh, one person, one of your patients, uh, was talking about her her experiences with regard to uh, her adolescence, uh, you know, being victimized, assaulted. Uh, and most doctors don't spend a whole lot of time in in the care, largely because of the construct of the practice. But at AT Steel University, at KCOM, we kind of. Uh, teach uh, that yeah. ideology. Yes, we do. Uh, and you yes, practice it. So could you talk uh, more profoundly uh, to our audience about uh, that aspect, what it takes to be an osteopathic physician, the, the whole person approach to be, to osteopathy and not just uh, pushing numbers out, not pushing patients through? I think that's that was, that was the main draw for me to come to KCOM 
A.T. Still University, was, was this idea of empathy. I injured myself when I returned from Iraq. And so I found myself at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. And I was with the PM&R folks, the physical medicine rehabilitation. I had a nerve injury. And there were these two DOs that took care of me that I'll never forget. They asked questions about me, but then they also asked questions to my wife, how she was doing. And we were like, well, that, that's a little different. Mm-hmm. And they were DOs. And uh, more specifically, I think one was from KCUM. He's a KCUM graduate. And they recommended a book by Dr. Norman Gevitz that I should read. It's called oh, The okay. DOs. And that's when my journey toward becoming an osteopathic physician kind of took oh. off. But it was that idea of, well, I just wasn't a guy with a knee injury and a nerve injury. It was, well, what's going on with you? What's going on with your spouse? And so from day one, when I started my matriculation at KCUM, it was always about whole person healthcare. Mm-hmm. That's the foundation of if, if we don't care about our person, our patient as a human being, how can we possibly care for whatever is ailing them? And that's the philosophy that is taught to us. And it's over and over. And it becomes I think it just becomes something I think the people that they attract to this university, to this college have that in them and they just work and expound that. And so you start having it when you have your uh, standard patient or standardized patient encounters and, and trying to understand where the patient is coming from and not just, well, your, your blood pressure is good. <laughs> your cholesterol is good. I'll see you in six months. Right. And get them in, get them out. But you actually want to get to know your patients. Like Clint was referencing as a young person that 73 years young, opening up about something very intimate. And I, you have to, that is sacred to be able to have someone open it up. And I, and I, I know without a shadow of a doubt that starts with the training that you get at KCM and you get at AT still university. It's just, it's a mindset and that's how our physicians, how our osteopathic physicians should feel when they do graduate. That is phenomenal. Um, I can't thank you enough for um, the work that you do. Uh, I think that uh, your progression um, in your career is aspiring uh, to young people. I've, I've uh, on my road, our, our office, you know, we've connected you with some uh, aspiring yep. uh, yes. young yes, students. Uh, and I appreciate uh, your willingness to be there as a uh, mentor to help uh, uh, see them through uh, that journey. You, too, can be here. Uh, it takes uh, a lot of patience, a lot of practice, and tremendous hard work to be in a place Uh, as a medical doctor like Dr. Thurman. There are people like Dr. Thurman, whom uh, I reach out to all the time, who are willing to assist you in that journey. To learn more about A.T. Steele University, visit our website, and it is www.atsu.edu. You can go to our website. You can click on the Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, if that's what you're interested in, and uh, learn more about that specific school, but we also have uh, the School of Osteopathic Medicine in Arizona. Uh, We have two dental schools. Um, In Missouri, we have the uh, uh, Missouri School of of Dentistry and and Oral Health. And in Arizona, we have the Arizona School of Dentistry and Oral Health. Um, Visit our website, learn more about uh, what osteopathy is, what ATSU has to offer, Uh, and identify in our webinar series uh, those persons whom uh, look like you, whom you want to be like, and reach out to us. Uh, We'd love to connect you. Thanks again for joining us uh, in this uh, edition of the Getting There series at A.T. Steele University, and have a wonderful day. God bless you.